Welcome to another instalment of Model Tank Chats with Spartan086. Today we're going to do some of the last, sorry, of my 21st century and Ultimate Soldier tanks. Most of these have some kind of modification done to them. And uh, we'll hit them up. So, first off, uh, we'll start with the fact that we have two Sherman Fireflies and two Shermans that have been created into DDA Funnies. We have a Berg Panther and a Panzer Mark III. Uh, when it comes to 21st century vehicles, um, obviously they're not as robust as the Forces of Valor collections, but not, not to take anything away from them, they are excellent builds. The Fireflies are actually come in boxes where you hand build them not like a 1 to 35 scale model it's basically just a uh, connect and screw in kind of thing but there's a lot of things you can do with them so obviously as you see one of the fireflies has a bit of tank netting across it it's actually it's supposed to be tank netting it's actually a scrum net uh, from the early years of my military service, found some of it, decided to cut it up but it cost the, the wagon to give it a kind of a hessian netting kind of look to it the vehicle next to it you'll see is still not complete, I've still got a lot of things to do to it I did originally put aluminium foil around the wheels but I decided to take it off because the aluminium was too large and it just took the effect away from the vehicle you'll see the chains obviously here so it became a Sherman Crab obviously from the D-Day Funnies from the 79th Armoured Division still needs a paint so I'm going to get some more chains and some balls on the end of the chain so it gets a better look to it uh, overall uh, the tank itself came with a dozer blade which I can't find now because I was going to add that to another vehicle uh, that's not the point. Uh, it's a uh, uh, these these are good be good be vehicles to buy. They're not expensive. They're good ones to add to collection. Obviously, like I said before, if you're doing dioramas, the brilliant ones to have in. If you like your forces of valor and you like to put them in, you know, obviously these are thirty two scale as well, so they they're quite compatible. Obviously, they've not got the same uh, look to them as the FOV vehicles. But still, they're good to um, modify, such as the crab. And you can see, I gave it a terrible coat of paint. It's actually like the paint was going out, so I decided to throw it on, get it done up as best I could before it ran out. I'll get round to it one day of actually fixing it up. But the idea behind the crab was a good one. Uh, history to the crab, excuse me, is that, obviously, Hubert, Major General Hubert, Decided that obviously with the obstacles that Rommel had placed along the Atlantic Wall needed to be dealt with. Uh, obviously tank ditches, mines, um, uh, bunkers etc. had to be dealt with. Obviously you also had the, uh, tank, the floating tanks, uh, 70 days. Um, they were all part of the same thing of it. Being able to get tanks ashore, support the infantry, do the breakthrough. So, uh, the DD funnies come from that. Now, the crab is very effective. You still see the effects of the crab today on certain kind of mine clearance vehicles. There was another mine clearance vehicle which had four big wheels. I know, it sounds like something, out of, exactly what it sounds like, the funnies. Uh, but you'll see that today where... Uh, Russian, Israeli, American vehicles, got the main lane kits, wheel, wheels in front, they wheel forward, hit a mine, kaboom, the vehicle doesn't get scratched. So overall it's it's a smart idea and it's a good wee uh, customisation to do. I'm not the best when it comes to them, I just pick things that I've got extra and try to make them work for me. Um, sometimes... Um, I'll pick up kits that are cheap and then I can obviously customise the vehicle going. I mean, you don't really get a lot of 
cheap crab model kits. So decided to try and do this on the fly. It's worked out not too bad. I know there'll probably be guys going, oh, I could do that better. Yeah, you probably could. Good for you. But um for me it did did not too bad. Uh the Firefly, <clears throat> which I've got two. Uh these came quite well. Very light. Um not bad wee builds. Obviously a wee bit of netting to them. Uh, I was trying to go for a wee bit of the kind of market garden look or later 44, 45. And Northern Army look as a, as Monty's guys pushed into Northern Germany. So it's it's overall good good we tank. I would well recommend it to others. I usually go for about twenty five thirty pound in the UK. Um, I don't know about the US or Canada or anywhere else in the world. But if you do see one and you're looking for a wee collector's thing, they are good. They are very light. Um. Turret can come straight off if you get it in the right place. Can't be bothered doing it. Um, but they are, you know, <clears throat> they are alright. You can most of the things are open and shut. There is no real engine compartment that you can open, but you do have the wee extras, obviously, like the extra tracks and um, it is usually like a fifty cal on top, as you can see in the other one you get. Uh, I picked this one up, built. I think it was for about a tenner. This one I. I picked up in the box and built so that wasn't bad uh the crab obviously like i say is i just kind of got bits and pieces and put them together and uh, most of it came from the berg pan for kit that i used and i'll get to that um and just slap dash that together it worked out not too bad could have been better but overall not too bad um Obviously, you've got the, the logs. Um, I use these quite a bit when I was doing customizations. Uh, I could pick them up. I think it was about 40, 50 logs for eight, nine pounds. Um, so, it is a good wee one to get. This one is missing a bit. It's fallen off, which I'll need to get a hold of. There was supposed to be another log connecting up rather than just having it like that. So it was sturdy. But the whole point of that was obviously uh, coming along you might find a ditch being built say maybe 10 metres apart from the tank went in it would get stuck. So the whole point was the, um, the vehicle would drive up, discharge the rope, do a brake, the logs would roll forward, fall in or the idea I've got maybe fall and then the doors I can push them in. That creates a surface and then the vehicles can drive the top. You also had ones that lay almost like a carpet along the sand and it was to stop vehicles. It was a Churchill. Um and it lay like almost like a carpet kind of effect. So tanks could drive or it was to stop them sinking. It was a good idea. The whole point of uh, this vehicle actually came from uh, the funnies as well was not a Sherman, it was a Churchill that used this, the uh, log effect. And uh, there's a name for it. It's not foliage, it's going to be an F. Oh, sorry, I, I've totally forgotten it. Um, uh, but you can see it did, did not too well. Uh, overall, it didn't actually cost that much because all the wee bits and pieces I could find about my house I used. Uh, obviously, uh, people will get a good laugh out of this, but um, ice bowls, etc. With a uh, the, the wee sticks that came with them, you can use them as boards. Uh, I can't take them apart, but you'll see at the front, use them as boards. And just cut them all, to usually about, roughly about the same length, and then just glue them all together and put them on. The actual name for the vehicle, the wood piles, and what's called now is like the plastic piping, is the fascines. So, sorry, I had to look that up there in a the book as best I could. Uh, so obviously they come along and drop their part. You'll see nowadays we um, uh, the AVREs. It's the British version, armored armored vehicle, rail engineers. Uh, it's the Titan Trojan. Uh, Kai's for seen drives up, and it's like pa heavy plastic tubes. Drops them in, 
or it's got a crane that lifts them in, drops them, puts them long enough, bears can go drive over the top. It's just to help <coughs> keep things rolling. I mean, if you're doing a breakthrough, you don't want to stop because there's a big pit. I mean, you look back to how medieval times when they um, had a boat, you know, people started using their head rather and just go, damn, we're blocked, let's just go home. You know, speed is a key to break through and to keep it going. The faster you push, the more they have to work about how to create a defensive line. So the whole idea is based around that. No, I'm not going to go into all that because I'm not Gadarian or Manstein or anybody else. <clears throat> Uh, so it, it was quite cheap doing it, you know, you can get things around about the house, like I say, from ice poles, etc. The same with these, these came from ice poles, um, just give them a clean, a wee wash, dried them out, then put them to work. I've actually got a drawer over there full of them. So, like I say, you can pick up the hog barrels uh, quite cheaply and uh, obviously the wee things you can gather and then do them as they go. I mean, overall, I think this thing cost me about you know, 12 13 pound to do, which is good. I've also got plastic piping in here as well that runs along. And I'm keeping every bit open so obviously the driver can see when I first did this. But I actually came down, it wasn't until I realised, I went, oh damn, how's the driver going to see? Is he going to be leaning out? And then I thought, oh, somebody might say, yeah, they've got... A designator going along saying, keep coming, keep coming, stop. But then I was thinking, when he's driving along the road, he's not going to have that consistently, so I had to open that up. And we'll go to the next one, which is the Panzer three, which is a great wee model as well. So, you don't get these with Forces of Valor, but good wee collector item, like I've said before, with a 21st Century and Ultimate Soldier. Uh, the Panzer three, obviously with a wee 50mm gun, um, played a big part in the early stages of the war, including up to Barbarossa, but... Uh, by the time it got there, it was severely outgunned, severely out-armoured, and was basically just needing to go. It was still used, and I think it was a light recce kind of unit. I think the Germans used them primarily for reconnaissance or um, kind of anti-insurgency. You know, with partisans down in the Balkans and France, etc. Um, obviously, it's no match for the T-34s and that after a while. So, but it's a good wee model to have, uh, tracks and all that work, um, still has opening, closing turret, casing in, um, at the front for the driver, etc. And at the back, all the wee panels at the back open as well, turret's movable. So overall, it's a good wee model, if you see one, do get it, it's a good wee collector's item. And the last but not least, uh, my Big Panther. Now, I'm going to point out that this isn't 100% scale. Yes, you're right. I used a 135 scale model that was going very cheap and decided to add it to a 21st century Panther. Uh, so, there's probably somebody out there screaming, going, ah! Uh, yeah, I know. Don't really care. I like it. It still needs a, a lot of work done to it. Uh, paint job's not bad. I kind of did that on the fly. But, it's mostly at the back, obviously with the engine compartment in here. It needs to get a lot of wiring put out coming to the back for uh, the uh, dozer blade and for obviously when eventually pulling vehicles. Obviously they had the heavy wiring and heavy um, tow cables. Uh, the crane still needs a wee bit of work. Looks like it's bending. Uh, it logs alright, but gun platform needs a wee bit of work. It's not a hundred percent to to scale, but it worked pretty well. Uh, I know another guy who did this and has turned out very well. And I think he went along the same path as me of uh, modifying a twenty first century Panther. So hats off to him. Um hats off to MD who does it. You know imagination's an amazing thing. Uh, I'll leave this video here. This will be the final video for a wee while. I Nearing the end of my collection, I'm going to get the last of the modern vehicles done. So you should see a video up maybe in a couple of weeks of uh, the Paladin in one ten, and uh, what else have we got up there? M sixty, and we'll start on 
the bad boys of the M1A1 and M1A2. Yes, Forces of Val didn't bring out an M1A2, but I've done a customised version with Tusk, and I'll get that up. I have the Challenger 2, which was Optelic Initial, and then you have the Megatron version. That will hopefully get up. I'll get the Megatron on it. It still needs a bit of work than now. Uh, it still needs a wee paint job for the MCS netting. And we'll get the T-72 line of Babylon up. And that will be the last of the ground vehicles of Unimax. Anything else that needs to get done would be uh, the USS Enterprise carrier. I'll get a video of that done. And I'll need to get the aircraft done. And then we'll start to, we'll start doing the Waterstones vehicles. And then hopefully the next time after that will be the next new vehicles that come out from Waterstones that I get. Um, oh, I've also got some other customised World War II vehicles to get up. I'll get them up so I'll get them up soon for everybody. Again, I hope guys if you're enjoying the videos, please like and subscribe. It makes my day a wee bit better seeing that other people are enjoying them. I uh, hope you are all well and taking care. And until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.